Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you're watching this. This is going to be the final chapter in, uh, or the final reading brief in uh, the Gateway Experience. And I should be able to finish this document uh, within this session, this reading session here today. So where we left off on was G, Focus 15, Travel into the Past. And we're going to, I'm not going to reread that. You could pause it and reread it. And we're going to start off at H, Focus 21, The Future. The last and most advanced of all the focus states associated with the Gateway Training Program involves movement outside of the boundaries of time-space, as in Focus 15, but with attention to discovering the further rather than the past, or the future. <laughs> the individual who has achieved this state has reached a truly advanced level. Except in unusual circumstances, it is probably not attainable except by those who have conditioned themselves through long application of meditation or by those who have practiced long and hard through use of the hemisync tapes for a period of months, if not years. 31. The Out-of-Body Movement this remarkable phenomenon has been saved for discussion in detail until last because of the interest which it, it occasions and special circumstances involved in its attainment. Monroe Institute stresses that the Gateway Program was not established solely for the purpose of enabling participants to obtain the out-of-body state, nor does the program guarantee the most participants will succeed in doing it during the course of the training at the Institute. Only one tape out of the many which make up the gateway experience is devoted to the techniques involved in the out-of-body movement. Basically, these techniques are merely designed to make it easier for the individual to achieve the out-of-body state when his brainwave pattern and personal energy levels have reached a point that he is in apparent harmony with his surrounding electromagnetic environment, such that he feels that he has reached the threshold where separation is a possibility. To facilitate achieving the out-of-body state, Bob Monroe, the founder of Monroe Institute, is quoted in a recent magazine article as saying that in order to assist the participant, the particular hemisync tape occurred concerned with that technique employs beta signals of around 2877.3 CPS cycles per second. Since 30 to 40 CPS is considered to be the normal range for beta brainwave signals, those associated with the wakeful state, it is apparent that the Monroe Institute is convinced that the same heightened state of brainwave frequency output, which promotes altered states of consciousness, is also an important consideration in assisting an achievement of out-of-body states. The actual techniques employed for separating from the body involve such simple maneuvers as rolling out, lifting out after the fashion of a telephone pole wherein the individual separates in a rigid, head-first manner, such that he finds himself standing at attention at the foot of his physical body and sliding out through either end of his body. Let's pause right there for a second because there's some stuff that I uh, uh, is is I haven't, like I said, I haven't gone into the weaponization of these Oy. There we go. All right, so let's look at this document real quick and uh, Let's also look at some existing patterns or patents. Remote magnetic manipulation of nervous systems. So that's what we're looking at here if we just look at that term. Um, here we go. Is in apparent harmony with his surrounding electromagnetic environment. So, I'm not going to read the abstract from the patent yet. I'm going to leave it up there. You can find it. There's the, uh, the information is in the 
uh, URL field. And here is the application. And this is just one of many, okay? And I'll, uh, let me just see, apparatus, let's read it real quick. Apparatus for manipulating the nervous system in the body of a remote subject, the subject having a location and the apparatus having a position. A geometric straight line being defined through the position of the apparatus and the location of the subject, the apparatus comprising a shaft. Uh, so basically, this is this is what people would call an energy weapon. Uh, this is continuation in part, which means it may be part of another patent with a patent number. And uh, uh, here we go. The effect can be exploited in magnetic as well as electric stimulation because the physiological effects of the former are solely due to the electric field that is induced by the rate of change of the magnetic field and by the electric polarization that occurs as the consequence of the indeed eddy currents, induced eddy currents. Uh, eddy currents, there's a term I should have been using. Uh, much like a surfer. The human nervous system exhibits a sensitivity to certain low frequency stimuli as is evident from rocking a baby or relaxing in a rocking chair. In both cases, the maximum soothing effect is obtained for a periodic motion with a frequency of half, one, just, just half a hertz. Not one hertz, half a hertz. The effect is called the half hertz sensory resonance. So, I would say that this just pisses me off, and, and I'm sorry if, uh, you know, a little bit of swearing there, but uh, this is not the only patent or energy weapon that exists, and I doubt, um, or I'm sorry, I fully believe that the research we're looking at with the gateway experience and this type of research here is directly correlated with known torture research. I think a lot of it's been repackaged sometimes. And um, I'm going to talk about something a little sensitive here before I get into number 32. And that is what is known as shock trauma or induced trauma or traumatic experiences in general. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because those types of things before technology existed like this remote magnetic manipulation of service nervous systems which may very well have been an ancient weapon in some cases or inadvertently become a weapon. Uh, physical abuse and mental abuse are also ways in which people are forced into a gateway or forced into pre-programming to accept programming. Violence is a method that was used in um, some older ancient texts. They didn't necessarily re, uh, communicate it that way. Oftentimes what you see is, is and I'm only using this as a, as a positive frame of reference, but the, the Christian principle of forget, forgive and forget and turn the other cheek and, and all the typical quotes that we often hear people reference. I think those are layers that were designed after the fact to try to make people feel better about what had just occurred. And, and the, the biological instinct of fight or flight, you know, to... Th there's no doubt that surviving pain will, in fact, connect those hemispheres. But the surviving part is so relative and, and idiosyncratic on an individual basis that what often has happened is it breaks the connection and in fact harms most people. So there's the there's the older, let's just call those specific methods archaic whereby <clears throat> instead of walking on fire rocks or fasting or learning to push yourself to do 200 push-ups or run 10 miles where you yourself are in control of the physical pain that you're inducing to a point where you're supposed to elevate or alleviate 
right? Those words are synonymous. Um, they, uh, you know, there were other methods that, that could have just been violence, could have been tribe violence or induced violence or, or mental violence and things like abuse, physical abuse. And the, the overtones of a lot of those texts are about surviving that part of the process in order to obtain the balance between both hemispheres. And we often, if we, if we look at shamanism, Hinduism, uh, Judeo-Christian, Druidic, Taoism, uh, Buddhism, um, we look at these specific, uh, even uh, I'll throw in uh, Islamic and Sufi uh, thought processes or Zoroastrian, we have this, we kind of have a bird's eye picture of how people affect us, how the environment affects us, how the celestial bodies might affect us. And then we have the after state of what happens after people affect us, what happens after the environment affects us, and what might happen after the celestial bodies affect us. And then you have another layer after that, which is what do you do with it and how do you do it? And that's really, for me, the ultimate... Uh, again, just loosely a bird's eye view of what all of the texts are, you, you do have to read them all. That's just part of the mystery. It's, it's, or what I've said before is I prefer to call them the mastery cults or the mastery arts. And they're all predicated on transforming through alchemy, transforming your body, transforming your mind. And with that transformation, the, what has or how that transformation was developed was either through a forced or induced state by an external catalyst or you're self-imposing it on yourself and you're able to do it and, and get yourself through it on your own and the get it get it getting through yourself and on your own is more like the fasting the exercise the continually just challenging yourself and uh the overall uh, goal is to to break your own perception, you know, and and to increase your own state of consciousness. However, in in whatever measurable way you can do it, you know, however you want to measure it. And then on the opposite, you know, the 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 backside of that is uh, you're hurt. You know, you you hear stories of people dying or being hit by a car or uh, being attacked by other people and all of those experiences they they do do something to your brain with the torture or abuse and things like that um, those those because it's kind of, it's like if you're not of if you're a family person or you're a parent and you believe in corporal punishment and uh I think if you've had children or siblings and, and you've seen how they grow up and how much they really torture each other, um, you know, that's almost like what you want is, is the t what's called the tough love response. But the problem is, is that we've, from what I can tell, and at least in my own personal experience, is you have these, let's just say, pseudo masters who believe they, they have figured out what to do and how to do it. And um, actually, I should have said body magic or body transformation as well also occurs through sexuality and sexual exploitation, uh, both on, you know, the positive side where you're in love with someone and then on the negative side where, unfortunately, uh, you know, some of our crimes occur <clears throat> in society today. The, the masters, the pseudo masters who think they're masters of whatever they do really take it too far and then they break the person and they break people and in some cases let's just say I've uh, let's say I, I used to work in Florida and I excelled really far in my career made a little bit of a name for myself and um, 
I decide to up and move, I want to go to another market and try to earn a little bit more money, maybe just you know have a different place to live and, and you know revitalize my enthusiasm for my life going forward. And I get to a job in California or uh, LA or, or San Diego, whatever, just just more of a metropolitan area. And what happens, and this is has been typical for me, is that the same people there will say, well, now you're here, and now you're going to have to go through all of the tasks and training and the initiation of being in this spot. You know, it's like if I've mastered billiards on a six-foot table, and I mastered billiards on the on the eight by four table, and I've mastered bumper pool on a octagon table. What happens is 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 I've noticed is just using that analogy is I'll go into another pool hall in L.A. or San Diego, keeping in mind this is me just trying to get a new job. I'm using that analogy, <clears throat> and then you just have people start cheating instead. Like, well, just because you played well on those tables in Florida doesn't mean you're going to play well on these tables here in L.A. And I'm using billiards because it's actually not a one-to-one -one person sport where it's not like, uh, it's not on the field. It's, it's different. It's like chess or checkers. So what I'm saying is that people will <clears throat> take it too far. They'll take it so far and they'll think that they should continue doing it to other people. Or that you just have to keep going through the tribulations, which is really what it comes down to. And those tribulate, <clears throat> excuse me for one second. <clears throat> those tribulations are the steps that any initiate has to take. And when I say initiate, I'm not necessarily referring to occult, religious, or anything. It's just someone who enters in a new field of knowledge without any experience and not having the tools already imbued in them to survive that that or learn from that or take something away from it as well as contribute to it and we we do have a bunch of broken people and i mean this and i i, it, I will say it pisses me off but we have broken people who are stuck in that cycle of abuse or tribulation they're they're just the tribulators and that's all they know how to do they themselves have not made it any further in their own practice and in some cases, they themselves have become addicted to their tribulation process. If it's like, uh, you know, say you, let's go back to corporal punishment. And um, it's, it's like a, a 40 year old man not knowing their own strengths and striking a 10 year old child and not remembering what it was like to be a 10 year old child and knocking the kid unconscious, you know? And that's not really, that's obviously not what we're trying to do here. Now, on the other hand, I'll take it from the grandpa position, you know, the old grandpa, grandma position. You know, maybe I need a, a ruler on that ass, right? Or a, a wooden spoon, or something to, to at least know how to awaken the person, the child enough to recognize what they are, what they did wrong, or what they need to recognize, and unfortunately, both of those processes have have become extremes in our society. Right? They have the 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 person who knocks them out isn't is is because they're forty years old, and thinks that they're already above a certain status to where they don't need to really learn much anymore. And what we find here, with any secret text, mastery text, religious text, philosophical text, these gateway experiences. And as I said with the Bertrand Russell quote, the more you look, the more you'll find is people have, the, have made the choice to stop looking and to stop growing and to stop earning or, or producing any knowledge for themselves. And they too have become comfortable with what they have and thereby that comfortable attitude turns into a form of radicalism, an emotional materialism where they want to hold on to what they know and they refuse to understand there's that 
things have changed or there's actually new information to contribute or in some cases they're just physically incapable and, and maybe they deserve to take a take a break and not have to really try to catch the train every day so to speak and uh, I, I think this is worth discussing just at least loosely because this is this is the types of behaviors that have led us up to all of this you know these are the the philosophies and the religions and the secret fraternities and the uh, so-called um, sacred arts uh, or uh, the tribulations which is one of the most important tribulations that really goes unwritten and un unrecognized is that uh, say from a Christian perspective or, uh, or uh, mainly yeah, let's just say the Christian perspective it's uh, from the Gospels it's it's you suffer as the Father in order to understand the glory of the Father that's what it comes down to. There's no, I can just read the Gospels and be a good person and I'll go to heaven. That really undermines and does a disservice to what the Gospels and what the what the Bible is and, and what it's really communicating at the end. When, if, if you're someone who believes in the sacrifice that Jesus made for the Christian and for the world, the people of the world, you're missing that point. Like you'll never know that glory because you're not willing to make the sacrifices necessary to get there. You're just kind of relaxing with the book that you were given and told to just follow the book. And that may that's not necessarily your individual fault. I mean that's what that's what someone taught us to do and how to think. But that same suffer as the Father to a, to understand the glory of the Father is or the tribulations, or the, the roles of the initiate, they're all the same thing. And we kind of have to accept that. Um, you, you just can't sit on the surface of stuff and float around on the achievements of other people and then come back and critique those achievements when you yourself have not really made any, any effort to contribute or be a part of the achievements of others. You don't know what they've suffered to go to get where they are to, to make this thing or do that thing. And the, in the case with even this this research, I don't know. I mean, ah, gosh, I, I hope I hope what I've heard about this the, these torture things and what I've read are myths, right? I hope that that didn't happen. I hope that people didn't suffer the way they did. But unfortunately, I think we have enough validated records to see what's happened in the past to give us this information, whether it be modify, having a, a, a gateway experience or somebody thinking we needed to invent something where we can control people's minds and insert thoughts or to attack them invisibly with waveform patterns. We, we have to really examine that. And uh, I think that that comes down to us accepting in, a, in, let's just say, a naturalistic way. Uh, I don't want to call it sin, but um, there often is some pain before the glory. So there has to be a, at the same time, there's nobody moderating these pain givers, the ones who think they're entitled to do it. They continue cheating, uh, and then on the opposite end is, is wherever you go, wherever you travel, say, for this job or this career, circling back around to the beginning of the conversation, to, to move forward and, and make a new name for yourself or to create a career for yourself. The people who think that they're, the fact that they keep submitting you to the same tired, cliched variations of the initiations shows how little they themselves have learned. So I guess to close off this thought and move back on to, to number 32 here is if you have ambition, if you just have ambition of your own and you're willing to persevere through most things for whatever it is you want to do to succeed, and I don't mean you want to succeed at forcing other people to do what you want. I mean, if you have an ambition to be a maker or a creator or a producer of some sort, you're going to encounter your own challenges by approximation anyways. You're going to have to achieve a bunch of, let's say, random 
ex examples of pain through uh, my computer crashes while I'm working on a thousand line, 200,000 line code and I didn't save it and back it up. Or um, uh, I decide I'm going to teach myself to rollerblade and man, does my ass feel sore from the amount of times I've fallen. It, it, the goal is to just keep having goals and, and work through every idiosyncratic challenge that occurs from that goal. Not to have people who think that their job is to continually create obstacles for your goals. Because it's actually not a natural process. And that gives too much power to the other person. And then unfortunately what happens is that's actually a much lazier, what you have is an inversion of that now is you have people looking for ways to be more creative and how they can hurt people. It gets inverted. The whole process gets inverted. And you have ways for people, well, we're just trying to stimulate people into a new direction. This isn't stimulation. This, this patent is torture. It's consumer torture. It's government torture. It's, uh, if this patent is publicly available here, I mean, I guess with a little bit of time and effort, I could actually make this myself. And what would that do for us? How many people might have achieved that same thing? How many people from these intel agencies or military backgrounds have done this already? I mean, it's, it's something we have to discuss because this gateway experience and having a sound body and mind and body and how in the... Uh, the, one of the first video series I released from Cryptological Aspects of ESP, we talk about moral, ethical aptitude. And um, I mean, what, at what point? Who's making those judgments? At what point does the, 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 the role of the obstacle maker become inverted into a sick, you know, twisted, inverted version of just a torture bearer, you know, a torture maker? Especially when those people have no longer been able to recognize when someone's above them or in effect, is it time for the wooden spoon or is this really time to just sit and let someone be silent and, and let them, let them uh, develop their own guilt and develop their own uh, mental mode of, of why they're being reprimanded or whatever it is, or you know whatever whatever the initiation is whatever the process you're trying to teach the person is or quiet time right that's what we might say in, in reference to a child when does when, who makes those decisions amongst the society because these weapons have clearly been deployed and created this gateway experience research is 100 percent true millions and millions and millions of dollars gone into it that is, is basically an evolution of a bunch of other scientists from other countries being imported into the United States and those scientists from those countries themselves using more ancient and esoteric knowledge to achieve uh, more whether you want to call it power or control whatever it's that's what they were doing so all right, let's take a, a minute to refocus and look at number 32 and uh, the role of REM sleep, random eye movement sleep. It is interesting to note that Bob Monroe informed the Gateway class that finished 7 May 1983 that an ex-trainer of his operating in Charlottesville, Virginia, found that he could guarantee out-of-body movements by bringing participants down into a rapid eye movement state of sleep and then use the hemi-sync tape technique. This may well be a function of the fact that most if not all people repeatedly go into an out-of-body state during REM sleep. REM sleep is the deepest possible level of ordinary sleep and involves complete disengagement of the body's motor cortex functions from the neck down and nearly complete suppression of consciousness in the left brain hemisphere. The effect of this is to put the body in a state of complete stillness so far as the skeletal muscle structure is concerned, thereby further promoting the state of deep rest needed to eliminate the bifurcation echo. 
In addition, it leaves the right hemisphere of the brain free to respond to the instructions and suggestions contained on the gateway tape. However, use of the hemisync tapes at this point may be less a factor in actually achieving the out-of-body state than it is a matter of focusing the brain enough so that a residual memory of having naturally achieved an out-of-body state is carried into the waking state. Indeed, it may even be postulated that some dreams associated with deep levels of sleep are in fact functions of the same kind of altered consciousness involved in interaction with the universe that plays a role in all of the focus 12, 15, and 21 states described above. The difference between these states and the condition of the mind in REM sleep seems to be that the left hemisphere is almost totally disengaged in the latter experience, such that the memory of what was achieved in the altered states of consciousness cannot usually be retrieved by conscious desire because the left hemisphere has no knowledge of its existence or its location in the right hemisphere. Admittedly, some people can be trained to remember their REM state dreams through intense conditioning in the waking state, but even that may be more a function of establishing pathways in the right hemisphere, which the left hemisphere can access following re-entry into the wakeful state, that it is an indication of any specific left hemisphere consciousness involvement in the process during REM sleep. In any event, the three apparent conditions required for voluntarily inducing an out-of-body state in most individuals seems to be 1. Achievement of a state of profound quiet in the body such that the bifurcation echoes fade and resonance at hemisphere wave patterns. I'm sorry, approximately at 7 hertz is established. 2. Synchronization of the two brain hemisphere wave patterns. And 3. Subsequent stimulation of the right hemisphere of the mind's to obtain a state of heightened alertness, which of course interferes with brain hemisphere synchronization, but not until a sufficient level of enhanced frequency range has been first established to help achieve the out-of-body state. I mean, it's also like, I mean, at what point is out-of-body also, well, you just died, we killed him. We killed him remotely. His spirit can't return, or however you want to say it. Again, looking at these patents here. So let me read number one again because I stumbled over that. So number one, uh, let's read the entire paragraph. In any event, the three apparent conditions required for voluntarily inducing an out-of-body state in most individuals seems to be achievement of a state of profound quiet in the body such that the bifurcation echo fades and resonance at approximately 7 hertz is established. How can anybody get a resonant frequency when they're surrounded by electromagnetic smog and radiation? Or worse, they're being attacked or targeted with energy suppression weapons. Or you're watching fake news 24-7 and you're constantly under or you give yourself the quality of constantly being under fear that something is going to happen to you based on what the news is telling you. I mean, how much, of, of, how much are we self-torturing ourselves every day with stuff that has been introduced into the market to keep us from doing this? Thinking it's just consumer goods, it's just everyday life. Number 33, information collection potential. This looks interesting here, in belief system considerations on number 34 there. The information acquisition potential associated with out-of-body state seems to attract the most attention from the standpoint of developing practical applications for the gateway technique. Unfortunately, although the out-of-body state can apparently be achieved by many people without excessive expenditure of time or effort, the purposes to which it can be put are currently limited by the fact that although individuals in that state may travel anywhere on an instantaneous basis in either the terrestrial or in other spheres, information distortion in the former context remains a major concern. So this is us struggling with trying to fill in the blanks with what we've seen and inadvertently changing what we've seen because we're trying to be intelligent and connect the dots for ourselves. To date, according to one of the trainers at Monroe Institute, numerous experiments have been conducted involving persons moving from one coast to the other in the out-of-body state to read a series of 10 computer-generated numbers in a university laboratory. 
Although most have acquired enough of the digits to make clear that their consciousness was present, none have ever succeeded in getting all 10 correct. This seems to be a function of the fact that physical reality in the present is not the only holographic influence which the individual may encounter in an out-of-body state. There are also energy patterns left by people or events occurring at the same physical state being viewed. So that's that recognizing someone's been there or the idea of the totem or the object containing energies from the maker, but from the past rather than the present. In addition, since thoughts are the product of energy patterns and energy patterns are reality, it may also be possible that individuals encounter thought forms while in an out-of-body out of state which mingle with physical reality and are not easily differentiated. That makes sense. You're just basically crossing your antenna is picking up multiple wave patterns from other people as well. Finally, as Melissa Yeager writes, there is another potential problem in the problem area in the sense that holograms can be viewed pseudo-copically, that is to say inside out or backwards, just as well as they can be seen in proper perspective. Some of the distortions occurring may ultimately prove to be traceable to this cause because in the out-of-body state, an individual may perceive the holographic energy patterns given off by people or things interacting in the time-space reality in a somewhat distorted form. I'm not sure I truly understand that I was I was good at the I was fine at the other aspect where the antennas are crossing patterns and you mingle someone else's projection or their residual energy into what you have experienced or what you're experiencing. With regards to the uh, number generation stuff too, all ten, we actually have research that shows that most people. I mean, the reason why phone numbers are seven digits or your social security number is a specific amount of digits or from a typographical and graphic design standpoint, like look at these paragraphs, how wide they are. We have research now that shows most people say with regards to this paragraph, when they read, they're better off with about anywhere from seven to ten words. Their, their eyes and their brain will not process any more than that. Or in the, in the sense of memorization of numbers and random digits, seven seven numbers is like the average median for most people to be able to remember whereby those who can memorize their credit card numbers or multiple credit card numbers and things like that that's an above average ability so we may have an issue here where it's a function not just of intellect and i don't want to use that or smarts it's just their ability to memorize stuff and that that could be relationship to the memory arts itself um, <clears throat> so number 34, belief system considerations. In 1967, Alexandria David Neal and Lima Yongden wrote a book entitled Secret Oral Teachings in Tibetan Buddhist Sects, from which the following quote is taken. The tangible world is movement, say the masters, not a collection of moving objects, but movement itself. There are no objects in movement. It is the movement which constitutes the object which appear to us. They are nothing but movement. This movement is contained in an infinitely rapid succession of flashes of energy. In Tibetan Sol or Shang, all objects perceptible to our senses, all phenomena of whatever kind of whatever aspect they may assume, are constituted by a rapid succession of instantaneous events. The classic description of the universal hologram is to be found in a Hindu sutra which says, In the heaven of Indra, there is said to be a network of pearls so arranged that if you look at one, you see all the others reflected in it. I have cited this quotation because it shows that the concept of the universe, which at least some physicists are now coming to accept, is identical in its essential aspects with the, known, with the one known to the learned elite in selected civilizations and cultures of high attainment in the ancient world. The concept of the cosmic egg, for example, 
is well known to scholars familiar with the ancient writings of the Eastern religions, nor are the theories presented in this paper at variance with the essential tenets of the Judo-Christian stream of thought. The concept of visible reality, i.e. the created world, as being an emanation of an omnipotent or omniscient deviant uh, divinity who is completely unknowable in his primary state of being. The absolute at rest in infinity is a concept straight out of Hebrew mystical philosophy. Even the Christian concept of the Trinity shines through the description of the absolute as presented in this paper. The description of energy totally at rest in infinity fits the Christian metaphysical concept of the Father, while the infinite self-consciousness resident in that energy, providing the motiv motivating force of will to bring a portion of that energy into motion to create reality, reality corresponds with the Son. This is so because in order to attain self-consciousness, the consciousness of the Absolute must be project, must project a hologram of itself and then perceive it. That hologram is a mirror image of the Absolute in infinity, still exists outside time and space, but is one step removed from the Absolute and is the actual agent of all creation, all reality. In the eternal thought or concept of self which results from the, this consciousness serves the, I guess we would move right into number 37, the motive, uh, unless I'm missing a, a page, 26, 24. Aha, 26, 24. Hmm. And number 34 here, and number 37. Interesting how the minute the author goes into Christian mystery stuff or Christian metaphysical concepts, that page has been removed. Okay. Motivational aspect number 37. It is a step-by-step -step procedure which involves repetitive practice of the techniques concerned, using each new insight as a means of penetrating farther during the next practice session. But the rate of progress is so much faster with the gateway approach than it is with the transcendental meditation or other forms of mental self-discipline, and its horizons seem to be so much wider that the dis discipline needed to practice it would seem to be within the means of, means of even the impatient, result-oriented, skeptical, skeptical pragmatists of our society. Unlike yoga and other forms of Eastern mental discipline, Gateway does not require the infinite patience and total personal subservience to and faith in a system of discipline designed to absorb all the individual's energies over most of the lifetime. Rather, it will begin to produce at least minimal results within a relatively short time such that enough feedback is available to motivate and energize the individual to continue working with it. Indeed, the speed with which an individual may expect to progress seems less a function of the number of hours spent practicing than it is a question of the speed with which he or she is able to use the insights gained to release anxieties and stress within the body and mind. These points of energy blockage seem to provide the principal barriers to achieving the enhanced energy states and focus of mind needed for rapid progression. The more compulsive, the more uptight the individual may be at the outset, the more barriers he or she will initially encounter to achieving a deep state of immediate experience. But as the insights begin to come and the blockages begin to dissolve, the way ahead becomes increasingly clear and the value of gateway moves from the status of a matter of intellectual assessment to one of personal experience. That's a good closing thought there on that one. 38. Conclusion There is a sound, rational basis in terms of physical science parameters for considering gateway to be plausible in terms of its essential objectives. Institutional insights of not only personal but of a practical and professional nature would seem to be within bounds of reasonable expectations. However, a phased approach for entering the gateway experience in an accelerated mode would seem to be required 
if the time needed to reach advanced states of altered consciousness is to be brought within more manageable limits from the standpoint of establishing an organization-wide exploitation of Gateway's potential. The most promising approach suggested in the foregoing study involves the following steps. A. Begin by using the gateway hemisync tapes to achieve enhanced brain focus and to induce hemisphere synchronization. B. Then add strong REM sleep frequencies to induce left brain quiescence and deep physical relaxation. relaxation. C. Provide hypnotic suggestion designed to enable an individual to induce deep auto-hypnotic state at will. Use auto-hypnotic suggestion to obtain much enhanced focus of concentration and motivation in rapidly progressing through Focus 12 exercises. E. Then repeat steps A and B following use of the auto-hypnotic suggestion that an out-of-body movement will occur and be remembered. F. Repeat step E to achieve facility in gaining out-of-body state under conscious control. After hypnotic suggestion, the stress ability to consciously control out-of-body movement and maintain it even after REM sleep state ends. G. Approach focus 15 and 21 objectives, escape from the time space, and interact with new dimensions from the out-of-body perspective. Uh, just stop. So, so we have two forms. That, like it's, you have a form of travel that allows you to move dimensions, and a form of travel that allows you to move in what's, I guess, considered your local time space. H, use multi-focus approach to solve problem of distortion in, in terrestrial information gathering trips. This approach involves the use of three individuals in the out of st out of body state, one viewing the target object here in time space, one viewing it at focus 15 as it slips into the immediate past, and one viewing it at focus 21 as it slips from the immediate future. Debrief all three and compare data gathered from the three points of view. If care is taken to ensure that the three all go out of body together in the same environment, their consciousness energy systems should resonate in sympathetic oscillation sympathetic. They can tune into the same target on different planes, dimensions, with greater effectiveness. Apologies, the helicopters have begun flying around again. I encourage pursuit of full self-knowledge by all individuals involved in the foregoing experiments to enhance objectivity and out-of-body observation and thinking, and to remove personal energy blockage likely to retard rapid progress. J, be intelligently prepared to react to possible encounters with intelligent non-corporal energy forms when time-space boundaries are exceeded. K, arrange to have groups of people in focus 12 state unite their altered consciousness to build holographic patterns around sensitive areas to repulse possible unwanted out-of-body presences. That's like a group shield. 11, Encourage more advanced gateway participants to build holographic patterns of successful attainment and rapid progress for advanced colleagues to assist them in processing through the gateway program system. In these experiments, if these experiments are carried th through, it is to be hoped that we will truly find a gateway to gateway and to the realm of practical application for the whole system of techniques which comprise it. And that's it. We've got a little list of uh, a bibliography here. It, the, per, the, the commander read some stuff, but they didn't. Um, it's not a very deep list, not, not a deep bibliography. I'm not sure how big these books are, but obviously Bentoff is referenced often. Melissa Yeager's referenced a few times. Monroe is the driving force behind it. So this is it. This concludes the, uh, the gateway experience here. And uh, unfortunately, I'm missing a page, which I did not notice the first time I went through this. And that's interesting because it was quantifying and qualifying the Judeo-Christian perspective as it relates to 
astral projection and um, I, I, I will look around for it there a lot of times some of the the um, declassified documents have multiple copies so even though there may be 30,000 documents four of them may be the same in case where sometimes even you know sometimes number 37 is blocked out for some reason and then it's it's not blocked out in another document so uh, all right well this is it this is the gateway experience in perspective um, I'm gonna end this here and uh, have a great day